again, my name is Svolha, and I'm presenting here the work um, done at Fondazione Bruno Kessler in Italy. Uh, together with my colleagues, uh, I'm myself, me and Luciano Serafini are from uh, Data Knowledge Management Unit. And this is a joint work between knowledge representation, between uh, Data Knowledge <coughs> Unit and uh, Human Language Technology Units. The title of the work is uh, Investigating the Semantics of Frame Elements. Uh, fortunately, we have lots of shared vocabulary with the first presentation, so I assume my task is a little bit easier. Um, okay, in the first slide, I want to give um, a very abstract overview and kind of motivation of what we uh, have, have done. Uh, our work is um, similarly to also to what you've uh, already heard to in the first presentation, is about the resource called FrameNet, which um, uh, is um, a database, uh, like a le lexical database of uh, frames which represent uh, situations or events. For instance, here the example is a cooking event and uh, each frame has um, frame elements or they're also called roles which uh, can be viewed as uh, participants to this event. Here, for instance, uh, participants to the cooking event are cook, food produced, place, so on and so forth. And in FrameNet you have uh, lots and lots of uh, annotated examples, annotated with these frame elements and respective roles. Um, the question, uh, wh when you want to use uh, FrameNet for some task, for some purpose, uh, a question what arises uh, is what is the semantic of these roles of uh, frame elements. Uh, there is a textual description assigned to a role. In some cases, in more or less half of the cases, uh, there is a generic label called semantic type attached to a role. But uh, in general, the mm, what can be a role filler is, uh, is unclear. And uh, a natural thing, a natural um, say way to provide uh, semantics for uh, for frame for a frame element is uh, to try to describe it in terms of WordNet Sinset. And uh, this is what uh, I'll be presenting here. Here I'm not like footnote. I'm not claiming uh, this is the first uh, attempt to align the two resources. There has been several attempts. One of them uh, was, by the way, cited in the first presentation. Uh, but uh, like uh, these attempts uh, have a bit different uh, purposes and very different methodologies, also with respect to us. And. Um, at least if you look for a source uh, like readily available online to be used uh, in uh, some of your NLP processing, ta uh, like natural language processing task, um, it's uh, hard to find one. So uh, in addition to uh, when we do this mapping, in addition to uh, mapping, uh, linking um, a frame element, a role to uh, to WordNet sinsets, we uh, come up with some weights or, yeah, with some weights assigned to the links between the two resources. Okay, now um, a bit more in details. So, a few more words on FrameNet. FrameNet uh, is a lexical database of English. It's based on examples uh, of how words are used in, in uh, real texts. Uh, is both human and machine readable, uh, large scale, and it's a project um, from Berkeley, California. Uh, here is uh, an example of the uh, human readable version of FrameNet uh, like available online. So here is my example of cooking creation frame. These are frame elements, cook and produced foods. These are lexical units, units verbs which uh, trigger this element in a sentence. For in a sentence, for instance, if you have a sentence about cooking, baking, preparing something, this suggests that there is a frame that, uh, like, that there is a frame that can be detected in this sentence. And the examples, the, uh, the annotated examples, provide role fillers. For instance, when I'm saying that uh, Drew or someone else has baked an apple pie, this apple pie is a role filler for the produced food role. 
Uh, applications of FrameNet are numerous. <coughs> there is uh, quite a big research community around it. It exists in a number of other, uh, other languages. And uh, as I mentioned, it can be seen as complementary to WordNet. There are some attempts uh, uh, relative to aligning the two resources, though um, fra compared to WordNet, <coughs> FrameNet has uh, low coverage in terms of, like if you compare lexical units to WordNet sensors. Okay, uh, what we are focusing on is the semantics of frame elements, the semantics of roles uh, connected to frames in FrameNet. So the main question here, here is simple. What can be a role filler? And the partial answer is given by um, so-called semantic types, which, uh, are, <coughs> which is a concept in, the fra in FrameNet itself. Uh, these semantic types indicate the basic typing of uh, role fillers, and they are uh, quite abstract. For instance, human group location, so on and so forth. Uh, for example, for a cooking creation frame, a cook, uh, the cook role is assigned uh, sentient semantic, uh, semantic type, where sentient is uh, kind of an agent, an entity which uh, can act and have some intentionality. There are around 40 semantic types, they're quite general, around half of them um, is mapped to WordNet sets. And uh, the problems are several ones. So uh, the coverage is not that high, half, roughly half of uh, frame elements in FrameNet have these semantic types describing uh, what can be a role filler. And they are sometimes too general, physical entity, which is mapped to physical entity synset in WordNet, which gives you basically not so much information of what it is. Or they are sometimes hard to make use of. Uh, for instance, when the semantic type is goal or degree, it's um, when you want to use it uh, to understand what can be a role filler. I mean, in, in many cases, you need to be more specific. So uh, what we propose is uh, an attempt to better characterize um, role fillers. Uh, motivation is twofold. Uh, we want to improve the resource itself and uh, ultimately uh, the goal is to try to improve uh, frame annotation tool performance. Our proposal the, and our result, say, the main result of uh, the work I'm presenting is um, the creation of uh, what we call the repository of senses for frame elements, where senses are, uh, represent typical role fillers and are WordNet sensors. And uh, to describe uh, the, the approach we've, took, we've taken in one short sentence, uh, will be uh, that the approach is bottom up. We start from the annotated examples provided uh, together with uh, FrameNet 1.5, and from them we extracted this uh, like semantical uh, representation uh, uh, answering the question what can be a role filler. So more or less what I'm talking about here is uh, for the cooking creation, uh, I would like to know that a cook is usually or a person or some small business or company like bakery and cooking creation uh, produced food pair. Like usually you have food or substance or artifact associated, associated to it. This is uh, the uh, methodology with uh, adapted in uh, creating the repository of senses. And here, I'm, I'm wondering, do, can you see the, the mouse? Yeah, you can. So uh, we start here on the left from the annotated examples, from sentences uh, where annotated with uh, rows, with frames and rows. And where we, what, uh, we, uh, where we want to arrive is WordNet Sinset. Uh, we, why we are not going directly from text to WordNet Synset, and there, there are a number of resources in between, because there are several problems to be solved. One of them is word sense disambiguation. When you want to map uh, an apple to a WordNet Synset, you should be quite sure whether this is a company or it's a fruit. Uh, and then also for proper names, it's not that you can uh, find um, WordNet Synsets for many of them. So you need some sort of typing. So you, you need to extract <coughs> types for a 
proper name, for instance, some famous actor, and then to go up the hierarchy to say that it's an actor, person, things like that. So um, the main steps of our approach, starting from annotated examples, we link uh, a concept, a role filler, to Wikipedia. Then, for instance, uh, like a mother was cooking you know, an apple pie. Uh, we link mother to Wikipedia page describing the mother, and then um, using two resources in the middle, we end up with um, WordNet Synset describing mother, doing word sense disambiguation on the way. So uh, a little bit more details about these steps. The first step is uh, linking to Wikipedia. Each role filler in the annotated example is linked to a Wikipedia page. Uh, and here, uh, we, uh, uh, we've done it using the tool uh, developed by Human Language Technology Unit by uh, Fondazione Bruno Kessler, by um, one of uh, the co-authors co of the paper. The tool is called the Wiki Machine, and it's a supervised kernel-based system trained on the uh, corpus extracted uh, from Wikipedia. Uh, and it's doing linking and uh, word sense disambiguation with uh, quite a high accuracy compared to the uh, analogous state-of-the-art tools. And it's available online. When we have a Wikipedia page, we want to get to a WordNet synset. For this purpose, we use BabelNet, which is a large multilingual semantic network. And here in this work, we are not really using the multilinguality aspect of this resource. What we're using is uh, the mapping between WordNet uh, synset and Wikipedia pages, which uh, BabelNet provides with uh, quite a high accuracy. Again, that's available online. That's a resource. Uh, <coughs> someone's resource we, we are using, the, the tool. Uh, in uh, many cases, especially for proper names, uh, BabelNet doesn't give us any result. And in these uh, situations, we uh, go to WordNet through Yago ontology, which is a, a large-scale automatically created ontology, which uh, inherits uh, the taxonomy structure from WordNet, from WordNet synsets, and knowledge about individuals, especially proper names, from Wikipedia. So basically, you have a Wikipedia page, you have categories of this page, I think most of you know what Yago is, but just in case. Uh, and um, in Yago, Wikipedia category is mapped to a WordNet uh, synset describing it. So uh, using Yago, we can uh, get, say, types, WordNet synset for uh, a Wikipedia page. OK, so um, here we've done uh, first three steps, uh, and we get from annotated examples to a list of WordNet synsets, like shown here in red, for instance, for Cook, we get a long list of synsets. Uh, among them are, I omit the identifiers, the, the synset IDs here, uh, wife, mother, chef, bakery, and so on and so forth. So uh, the last step we've done is the generalization of uh, extracted synsets. And here, the, the, the uh, objective is to, okay, to generalize over specific examples to be able then to accommodate unseen cases. Like if I've, uh, for this specific frame, frame element combination, I've seen lots of examples of cats, dogs, uh, tigers, I don't know who else. Uh, I won't be uh, like I'd be willing to generalize to animals or specific kind of animals to then um, be able to accommodate examples of unseen animal types. So the the and the uh, second objective is the compact representation of the repository of senses. The method we adopt here is climbing up. It's well straightforward climbing up the WordNet hierarchy, selecting the most representative. Since it's to um, uh, to describe the the semantics of the role. Here, for ex uh, like a simple example, uh, again about cooking. Uh, for cook uh, frame element, we had for cook role. I use interchange interchangeably role and frame element terms. So this is the same thing. So we had one 140 examples, annotated examples in the uh, FrameNet database. Uh, 
uh, the since before the generalization, the generalization are uh, shown here, like wife, mother, chef, baker, and so on and so forth. And after the generalization, um, what we get is that in 90% uh, of the cases, these were persons. In 3% th uh, of the cases, small percent of the cases, these were locations. And then we have uh, a long tail of um, so some synsets, like 2% of synsets, which were, we, were not be able, uh, we were not able to generalize over. Some numbers, um, which uh, like we get after applying uh, the methodology to the, um, to the corpus, to the uh, FrameNet 1.5 notated examples. So uh, in this corpus, we had uh, roughly around uh, 226 and a half uh, thousand role fillers, which we were able to link to Wikipedia. Uh, for 87% of them, uh, we um, get WordNet synsets uh, using BabelNet. For 9%, uh, we, like Yago, helped us to uh, acquire WordNet since it where BabelNet failed to do this. It, this. The difference in numbers also depends on the corpus. So the FrameNet annotated examples uh, use more proper proper nouns, uh, no, common nouns like mother, like John, some abstract John parent and so on and so forth, rather than uh, specific proper names that you would, you would find, for instance, in the news uh, article. So when we do, if, if we uh, would have done this linking for, for the other corpus, the, the percentages would be different, not 87 and 9, but a bit more balanced. But uh, never mind, for us in this work, the BabelNet line, the upper line was the primary way of getting WordNet synsets. So we get WordNet synsets, we generalize, <coughs> and um, finally uh, we had uh, uh, almost 4,000 frame from element um, pairs in the repository of census. Uh, the next step uh, was uh, the creation of uh, our uh, RDF version of the repository with the goal of, with the objective of making the resource available for the semantic web. And actually in the eco paper, uh, we give a link to, uh, to the text uh, version uh, of the repository and we, uh, we say that uh, we are, like the, the conversion of the resource to uh, RDF is our ongoing work. We finalized it, this work within summer in between the submission and the conference. Uh, it is available online. You just Google FrameNet Sense repository and uh, you get a link uh, to the page with uh, where you can download the resource, the documentation and some tools which comes with the resource for statistics, filtering. And also uh, recently we've uh, participated to Monet Challenge, uh, which was about the conversion of linguistic resources into linked data and were uh, awarded a runner-up prize here. Okay, I skip this. Uh, and uh, okay, an important point here is uh, that the old version of the repository is an intermediate level between two resources, which are uh, available um, in the uh, OWL or RDF OWL version. You can frame that in OWL and WordNet in RDF OWL. So it fits into linked open data cloud quite nicely. Okay, so we've produced uh, this resource, it's available online. Um, it con contains um, a bit less than uh, 4,000 frame frame element pairs. And uh, what we've done then, we've uh, tried to compare the, the census for roles, for all fillers we've obtained with the FrameNet itself, with the semantic type information available in FrameNet. Uh, this appears to be quite a difficult task because only for 6% of, uh, of roles in our repository there was um, semantic types in FrameNet which were linked to FrameNet. So we, could, we were able to do the direct comparison. There is some WordNet since it at, attached to a, to a role in FrameNet and we have also obtained uh, a list of synsets with uh, weights uh, out of our methodology. So for this 6% of the cases, we've done the evaluation here. I'm just giving some examples. Uh, 
in some cases, uh, like you, you should consider that comparison case by case, because in some cases, uh, we just get the high match. Yes, the, the uh, um, since that we, uh, we extracted are the same as the one, uh, are the same or less general than the ones uh, assigned by uh, frame net lexicographers. But in some cases, for instance, this second example, uh, this is a collaboration frame and the role is partner. So in frame net, the semantic type uh, attached is human. While if you look at the examples and you generalize by the methodology I presented, by the pipeline I presented, you generalize from the examples, you actually s see that uh, you have persons, well, living things, just in 40% of the cases. And uh, there are a lot of examples where the collaboration partner is either organization or region, city, so on and so forth. So in some cases, we also kind of corrected the information provided in FrameNet. For a, a large part of the repository, for 41% uh, of frame frame elements, uh, there is a frame net uh, type uh, in, uh, assigned by uh, the creators of frame net, but there is no correspondence to WordNet. So here, um, what we are doing, we are updating the semantics types by uh, providing more in most of the cases, more specific description of the uh, of the uh, possible role fillers, like here for telling addressee uh, pair instead of sentient, we are saying more specifically that it's in most of the cases either a person or political unit which is an addressee. Okay, and for more than half of the repository, there was no information available for the semantic types. Uh, so we, uh, what we are doing with uh, our resource, we are adding new semantic types. And uh, the last point is uh, about uh, different kinds of evaluation, which was, I would say, quite preliminary. There's much uh, future work directions in, in uh, this, uh, like related to this um, direction. So here the objective was to use the um, information we've extracted to try to improve the precision of a semantic role labeling task. And uh, what we've done here, we've used uh, the uh, semaphore uh, frame annotation tool cited a lot in the previous talk. Uh, we annotate, we have a, had a uh, test corpus, we have annotated uh, roles, frames and roles in a test corpus with semaphore. Then uh, we um, assign uh, a Wikipedia page to each, to each annotated role filler and extract it through either BibleNet or Yago, um, a WordNet synset characterizing this, um, this role filler, this example. And then we used uh, a number of uh, different uh, similarity measures between WordNet senses to compare the example and the semantic description of the role we have in our resource. So some highlights here, the corpus we used was a test set for uh, Semival 2010 task 10 and the annotation tool was semaphore. Uh, we, used two, we used two types of similarity measures. Uh, two were based on um, information content and two were based on uh, path length. And here are the results. The first line, uh, I guess, okay, the, uh, the first line uh, are semaphore results and the, the number in blue over here is corresponding to the path similarity measure between scene sets is basically uh, the best we can get. So roughly we can, but by this post-processing by this filter, we, we were able to show that we can improve the precision of the fragmentation tool on three uh, with a little bit more than three points, but then we lose in recall, which is obvious because we use the post-processing. Of course, one of the important future work direction is try to get into the frame annotation tool, either semaphore or uh, or other tool and to embed the information we have as a, um, uh, as a feature in the frame annotation process. Okay, summing up, 
uh, we've um, provide uh, we can say an extension of framenet uh, we call the repository of senses in uh, doing this we kind of interlinked uh, FrameNet, WordNet, Wikipedia, BabelNet, and Diago. So we used a number of various resource resources available in the semantic web. We uh, performed direct and preliminary task-based evaluation and provided the OWL version of the repository. Among the future work directions, as I've told, uh, there is much more to do on task-based evaluation. And also we're thinking of uh, enriching the repository by learning the binary constraints um, for all fillers which is like cook and, or for instance, killer and victim in a killing term. So usually these two goes together while these two are not. So I know an animal is usually not using a gun as an instrument, something like this. And there is a rich uh, structure of interframe relations in FrameNet. So we can use, exploit also these in, um, to improve our source. That's all. Uh, our, our repository is available online. The, the link is a bit long, but you can just Google FrameNet Sense repository and give us any comments or feedback you like. That's all. And th thank you for your attention. Uh, will it switch on automatically or? Okay. Uh, so when I looked at the kind of um, knowledge that you uh, construct in a way, it reminded me of the, the level of generality of psych. Right? So the, the kind of knowledge that you have, very generic knowledge about what things can be assessed or what things can you throw at somebody or, right? so this very general role filler type knowledge. And that's also the kind of knowledge that psych has. So how would you compare um, is it a dumb question? Is it a completely misle uh, mis uh, misguided association that I have? Or is there some similarity? Or, and if so, what? I mean, you can definitely... Uh, t uh, perhaps it would be interesting to try to create this link. I mean, we are able, using the same approach we, like, we use, we're able to link, for instance, to Psyche to see the, 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 same, the same concept and to see how it compares. But to, I mean, to compare the... the mm. So I guess I have two questions. One is that what you are, the kind of knowledge that you are constructing is comparable to the kind of knowledge we find in Psyche. And then the second, if so, does it make sense to do any comparison? The, the main difficulty I see here, I mean, it's interesting, but the main difficulty I see here is how you, what is the mapping between the knowledge you have in psych and the frame-based representation we are working with? Yeah, but, okay, so if there is a, um, no, I mean, technically, if there is, if there is a mapping, then of course it's very interesting to compare how uh, things like how things go together. Also the knowledge we extract, like psych is manually constructed. Then the knowledge we, we extract is from examples. So it's interesting to compare the real usage of the words in natural language and how it is described in, uh, in the formal resource, yeah. Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, what I was wondering is, so you are getting from a uh, word, right? You find you're getting to WordNet by going to Wikipedia and then going through Yego and the other tool that you're using. Did you compare how good you get to the synset of WordNet to a direct disambiguation? I mean, there are algorithms that would do a direct, a direct linking to WordNet just by doing the disambiguation, right? Did you compare, is it worth it for you to take all these steps until you get to WordNet? Is it better quality than if you just did an algorithm directly? Okay, the answer is, the direct answer is no. We, we don't have the, like, right away, the numbers of, uh, com the, the, the numbers of, uh, the results of this comparison. Uh, I would say that our main concern was uh, disambiguation in the first place and the 
the um, like what we know about the about many tools which perform this mapping is that they take the most frequent sense, <coughs> and in this in this yeah. sense, it is like the disambiguation steps say it's skipped. And then uh, also the other point is uh, linking uh, the proper names, which, I mean, linking common nouns, I think, would be quite accurate with the tools you mentioned, while linking the proper names would be practically absent. But uh, yeah, that's an important point, of course. And to this, once you reached Wikipedia, uh, w would you be able to use the same algorithms that you use on the uh, hierarchy of WordNet, right? But on the Wikipedia data set and skip now the step of going to WordNet? Yes, we could. And in some of our um, other works related to some other uh, natural language processing uh, task, we skip going to WordNet. We use, we try to extract types from Psyche, from DBpedia, from Yago, from all the, from, or from linked open data in general. So yes, we can, basically, when we get to Wikipedia, we can get to any of the resource linked to it. So, yeah. Okay.